in this video we will see the general form or general representation of a forcing function forcing function we will concentrate on four types of forcing functions it can be a dc so so far we discussed this forcing function that is a dc it can, it can be a constant current source or voltage source second one is the exponential so forcing function can be exponentially decaying or exponentially rising voltage or current so that can be the another type of forcing function third one we can have a sinusoidal so sinusoidal forcing function it may be a sine wave or cos wave so sinusoidal forcing function is the third type and fourth one is exponentially damped sinusoidal so totally <clears throat> if you can write all this one using a general form that will be very helpful later in analyzing the circuit okay so what is the general form so general form general form of representation we can use exponential okay so f of t k into e power s t we will use this as the general form to represent the above mentioned forcing functions and we may have to add many exponents but we will start with the single exponent then we may have to add also okay we will see but usually exponent is the key factor here so we will have this is the general form of forcing function where k and s are complex it can be a complex okay it is a complex constants constants and yes especially we will represent it as a sigma plus j omega so we'll represent like this sigma plus j omega okay uh, we will see that what is this sigma and omega we will see in a moment so this is a complex number k also it can be also a complex number okay so this is a general form so first let us take the dc case so dc so dc case what is the how to represent a dc source if we will consider a voltage so v of t v of t is equal to v not this is the common form of um, dc source that is v of t equal to v not it can be 2 volt 3 volt some constant voltage okay this is a dc form now how we can represent this one in this one okay so that is we can write like this v of t that is f of t where v not is nothing but our k and e power 0t 0t where k is v not it is a constant and s is 0 so then we will have a dc forcing function so dc forcing function is nothing but you can represent it using an exponential that is v not e power 0 t so e power 0 t will be 1 1 into v not will be 1 so this is the dc case second one we will take exponential case exponential so exponential case so v of t is equal to exponentially decaying or increasing or we will just take e power sigma t where if sigma is positive it is increasing sigma is negative it is decreasing so it is already in our required form what is the required form so f of t equal to k into e power s t so here what is k k is v naught here and s is sigma plus j into 0 that is nothing but sigma okay 
so that is nothing but a second case exponential so how to represent an exponential in the general form you just write as it is this is v naught is nothing but k sigma is nothing but s here okay that is the exponential third one uh, sinusoidal sinusoidal okay so sinusoidal how to represent it is v of t equal to vm general form we first will write cos of omega t plus theta so this is a sinusoidal forcing function and our general form is f of t equal to again we may have to add multiple exponents we will see that later so this is our general form an exponent multiplied by a constant okay so how to represent this one and we know that using euler's equation that is cos of omega t plus theta is equal to half half into e power j of omega t plus theta plus e power minus j omega t plus theta okay this is from euler identity rule we can have this equation now we will write in the main this in this equation that is v of t is equal to half vm half vm and within the bracket we will write e power j omega t plus theta plus e power minus j omega t plus theta okay so now if you take e power j theta outside so this becomes a half vm e power j theta i will take it outside inside it is e power j omega t and similarly one more we will get that is half vm e power minus j theta minus j theta and e power minus j omega t omega t so this one we can write in our above equation if you compare this with this we have to use two two exponents here so this together together can be represented as a k1 and this is e power s t we will write s 1 t and this whole term this term is k2 and e power this is nothing but s 2 t where k1 is equal to half vm or better i will write in next page so so k1 is nothing but half vm e power vm e power j theta where k2 is half vm e power minus j theta and s1 is j omega s1 is j omega and s2 is minus j omega and we'll observe this k1 and k2 k1 and k2 are conjugate complex conjugate pair you can see that k1 and k2 it's a complex conjugate pair wherever you have j you have minus sign here similarly s1 and s2 if you observe they are also complex conjugate pair so you are using complex number you are representing a real signal what is the real signal here it's a cos wave it's a cos wave but cos wave can be represented using a complex number but the k1 and k2 s1 and s2 are complex conjugates so then we can have a real function that is sinusoidal so sinusoidal function can be represented using this our standard form that is k1 e power s1 t plus k2 e power s2 t okay so now last one we will see that is exponentially damped this is the more general form exponentially exponentially damped damped sinusoid okay 
sinusoid. So that we will write V of t is Vm e power sigma t into cos of omega t plus theta. Okay, this is the exponentially damped. Here damped means again exponentially I can just tell exponentially varying. If sigma is a positive then this signal will look like exponentially increasing sinusoid. So if you plot this one so initially it will be small then exponentially increasing sinusoid if it is positive. Negative if it is there so initially it will be large then it will finally it will be uh, this will nothing but exponentially increasing or decaying okay so this how we can represent using our standard form so this we can again this one using Euler's identity rule we can write vm by 2 e power sigma t e power sigma t and within the bracket e power j omega t plus theta plus e power minus j omega t plus theta okay and in this uh, what we can do now you take out this vm and this e power j theta you take outside and you put this e power sigma t inside here. So what it will be e power j theta outside and inside it is sigma plus j omega t. Okay. Similarly, uh, you can write like this half vm e power minus j theta you take outside here and inside it is e power sigma minus j omega j omega t okay. outside t okay so this is again we can write it is nothing but k1 e power s1 t plus k2 e power s2 t where k1 is vm by 2 e power j theta k2 is uh, minus um, sorry uh, k2 is half vm e power minus j theta okay this is k1 and k2 and s1 is equal to complex number you will get alpha plus j omega and s2 is uh, uh, sorry not alpha um, sigma plus j omega s2 is sigma minus j omega now you can see that s1 and s2 are complex conjugates similarly uh, this one k1 and k2 they are also complex conjugate so this is how we represent forcing function it can be dc it can be exponential or it can be sinusoid or exponentially varying sinusoid okay so this is helpful when we use laplace transform so there this concept will be helpful